Welcome to the program. We now want to cross over to Tanzania where uh, John Alan Namu is on standby to just give us an update on the very latest. Remember, this is day three of the vote counting there in Tanzania. We are waiting to see who will be the next president of that country, either John Magufuli or Edward Loasa uh, from Chadema. Now, John Alan Namu, what is the very latest at this hour? Thank you very much, uh, Ian. We're still here at the Nyerere Convention Center where results of 52 more constituencies have been read just a short while ago, bringing the total tally up to 164 out of 264. Just 100 to go. There's another press briefing at 4 p.m. Hopefully by then we'll get some go forward and reach that magical number, 264. That'll let us know who definitely is the president, the next president of the Republic of Tanzania. So far, though John Magufuli uh, in a commanding lead against Chadema's Edward Loasa opening up that lead to almost a million votes he's currently at 2.23 million to um, to uh, Edward Loasa's 1.1.2 million um, and uh, there are press conferences right now being held uh, with respect to these elections specifically by Chadema um, and they yesterday came out to challenge some of the results that uh, th that were being read here here, the, the chairman of the NEC, um, retired Justice uh, Lubuva, very, very categorical, N again and again and again reiterating that they are not changing around results. But we'll get to his um, sentiments in a moment, as well as those from the Loasa camp. Right now, though, we've got someone who's been observing these elections. The observer missions concluded a majority of their reports, preliminary and final. And now we're going to speak to Lilia. Mahiri from the IBC, but of course uh, you're wearing another hat this this afternoon and of course through the entire election period as uh, an a member of the observer mission from the AU. Um, very quickly, let's start with uh, what you felt was something that was a hallmark of this election. Uh, thank you John Alan Namu for giving me this chance to speak as an observer. And I think the hallmark all across the country is the fact that there is peace prevailing mm -hmm. and that everybody has confidence in the Electoral Commission, including political parties and the media. You can see from the reporting mm -hmm. that they all have confidence in NEC. Yeah, well, not everybody has confidence. Almost, Ch Chadema generally. is a key stakeholder in this election. They've been challenging these results. In fact, we're, we're being told right now that Edward Loasa is addressing a press conference on that very issue having come out. Um, do you think, for instance, that um, the election was above board at, according to the report that, that you have um, as the AU? Was this, was this election above board? Do uh, Edward Loasa's claims have any weight? Uh, as you've said, I've been an observer mission with the African Union, mm -hmm. EOM, and we wound up our operations yesterday when we issued the preliminary statement. Now, generally speaking, we've seen that the procedures, the processes were above board. But remember, this is the first time Tanzania is having a fiercely contested election mm -hmm. under multipartism. So it is not surprising that Chadema is making those claims and uh, that they do have some doubts about NEC. They mm -hmm. have talked about the independence of NEC. They have said that NEC uh, is biased against them. And that, I think, is, a, is not surprising coming from an opposition party, mm -hmm. which has uh, over... Uh, a long period of time tried to make a mark and mm -hmm. for the first time we are going to see changes in the parliament uh, in Tanzania where yeah. Chadema will command a sizable number of seats. Mm -hmm. So remember it's a fiercely contested election. Alright, um, uh, some of uh, Loasa's claims uh, staying with the Chadema campaign coming from the fact that uh, the members of the NEC are elected by the government, by the president. They're appointed by the president. Is this something that made it into your report which respect to perhaps changes that would give the NEC an air of credibility and independence over and above its linkages to government? Uh, the stakeholders who came before the AU uh, 
uh, pointed out that uh, the independence of NEC is something uh, that is of concern mm -hmm. to many Tanzanians now. And remember, as I've said, people are now even more aware of their rights under the Constitution. Remember, there was even a process of constitutional review that did not uh, happen or did not go to completion. And this is something that Tanzanians will have to pick for the future. Mm -hmm. So the issue of the independence of NEC has been in question. Yes, they need probably to change the way they uh, appoint the commissioners, the chairperson of the NEC. And, uh, but for the time being, what we have observed is that the commission has performed its uh, mandate according to the constitution mm -hmm. and to the laws of Tanzania. They have done their job professionally. And as you can see, even during uh, the counting and vote tallying, and announcement of results. Mm -hmm. They have been doing a professional job, save for some of those areas, as you say, where Chadema is complaining. Yeah. Uh, but it is something for the future that uh, when they do the constitutional review process, they may want to look at how they want the electoral body to be composed before they go and change uh, the management structures. All right. What was uh, the AU mission's assessment of what's happening in Zanzibar? Of course, that being managed by the Zanzibar Electrons Commission. And there being a lot of tension right now prior to the announcement of those results, was there anything that your mission noted that perhaps was wrong with the way that that election was managed and um, specific to Malim Saif's um, uh, announcement that he had won the election before the, the ZEC made that announcement? Uh, I think we uh, AU has made a preliminary observation and we gave a preliminary statement. So we shall be doing a final report mm -hmm. uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, but having said that, I think I would also want to point out that Zanzibar has had its history. Remember, there were two kinds of elections here. Mm. We have the United Republic of Tanzania that brings together Tanganyika mainland and Zanzibar. And we also have uh, the NEC that manages elections here on the mainland and the five seats for the MPs who come from Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. And we also have ZEC the Zanzibar Electoral Commission that handles elections in Zanzibar. And uh, over the years we've had a lot of agitation for Zanzibar to be independent. So remember that there are those uh, agitations that have been there in the past. So Zanzibar is an autonomous or rather has an autom autonomous government yeah. uh, that is different from uh, the Tanzanian government. But remember, they have a union. Mm -hmm. When it comes to union matters, I think this is where they have had their challenges. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is not also surprising that uh, the opposition leader uh, made those claims. Mm -hmm. uh, but having said that again, I think uh, during the time of writing our final report, these are some of the things that will be alluded to, mm -hmm. because if they are to maintain the national unity that has prevailed for a long time, from independence up to now, they will have to find a way of uniting the people of Zanzibar or to keep that unity yeah. and ensure that even as they make a transition into proper democratic uh, governance and elections for that matter, mm -hmm. the country still remains united. Uh, speaking now as a person who is also serving as part of a commission, how important is it that the commission plays that specific role in bridging the gap between the expectations of the opposition and the expectations of the public and what's actually coming um, onto their desks to ensure that there is no pulling apart of those seams of unity? I think the commission here is very fortunate to a large extent. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, they have a country that is still very much united. And I think you have heard the slogan here uh, that uh, the Tanzanians have been saying, uh, Kuna maisha baada ya uchaguzi. Mm -hmm. That is quite profound. Mm -hmm. It means that we will vote, we will get our new leaders, we will get our president, but life goes on. And as I said earlier, this is a fiercely contested election that has come uh, during this uh, phase of it's sort of a transition for the country. They've yeah. had multipartism, but not to these levels where there is fierce competition and public debate mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, the opposition 
what they want, the changes they want. And you have seen how CCM has also been saying, if you want change, we can also provide that change. Right. It doesn't necessarily have to come from the opposition. And opposition has been mainly focusing on the issue that uh, their policies are for change. Mm -hmm. Now, the commission has a big job. NEC has a big job in ensuring that uh, they play their role and remain as neutral as they have been, mm -hmm. as impartial as they have been, and the professionalism that we have seen uh, will go a long way in ensuring that uh, the patriotism we have seen, the unity we have seen, the purpose as a nation uh, is held and that role for the commission, I think, is manageable because the general public in Tanzania has a lot of trust mm. in NEC. All right. Yes. Transposing the experiences that you've had here to what we have at home in Kenya, what's the one thing that if you could just pick up and carry with you, you'd take and implement back home in Kenya? The most profound experience that you've had from this election as a member of the IBC? Trust. Mm -hmm. That one word is very heavy. I don't know how I can carry trust. Because if you trust the institutions that have been established, and remember the people of Tanzania have also shown a lot of faith and confidence in their government. They trust in the government, they trust in the institutions, and they trust that everything that is being done, to a large extent, uh, is transparent. Mm -hmm. So if we could have that little bit of trust in our institutions, remember mm -hmm. we have tried to uh, rebuild the institution, re-engineer processes, because a lot of things went down. When we went down in 2007, yeah. it was because there was no confidence in the judiciary, no confidence in the police, no confidence in the electoral process. So if we can build that trust amongst ourselves and build national unity and know that the country, as we always say, Kenya is bigger than anyone or any party, mm -hmm. then we shall go uh, far in terms of you're democratic you're governance. You're speaking about something that perhaps is, over and is beyond the IABC's power to change. This is a political culture that you're alluding to. But I, I have to ask you this one before you go. Um, how then does the IABC start now when changing the political culture in Kenya? We're seeing already that the, the battle lines are drawn, trenches are dug. How does the IABC be that arbitrar that can say, look, aside from the past that we had 2007-2013, uh, that there's this future election that we have and we must be able to get this right. What, what specific changes are you thinking about to make that possible? Uh, and you're very right that this is quite a task for IEBC. We cannot do it alone. We cannot build public trust on our own. It calls for the effort of every Kenyan. Mm -hmm. You as Alan Namu taking up your role, our leaders taking up their roles, politicians taking up their roles, political parties playing their bit, and everybody putting in an effort. Nobody should be sitting back there to say that this is about IBC alone. We cannot do it alone. It is a collective effort. And that is what we have also seen in the Tanzanian society, that mm -hmm. they do things in, with a collective mind, that Tanzania ni yetu, basi kuna maisha baada uchaguzi. So let's work to build a nation, and not just about the role of IBC. We can have all the good strategies on how to get ourselves uh, uh, confidence with the public, but if everybody sits back and just decides to watch, then those battle lines, as you say, will remain drawn. And remember, we have a big monster that we, we know. There is ethnicity, mm -hmm. there is corruption. So I think we have a lot more to fight for positively. Because mm -hmm. if you use ethnicity positively, it can it take can you, you places. You can be united. But we use it negatively. And it has to start from our leaders. Mm -hmm. And again, we have the, 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 the very big elephant in our country, corruption. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We have to all work together to ensure public confidence is something we are working at collectively. A critic would say charity begins at home with respect to corruption as well within the IABC. That perhaps is also a conversation that we can have. But I know we don't have that much time to have that, that discussion right now. Thank you very much for joining us uh, this afternoon and wearing both hats for us here on uh, KTN News. Alene Mahiri, the, 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 I, the IABC Vice Chair, but here 
right now. She is an observer for the African Union who've been observing this um, election here and uh, giving their own preliminary comments about what's been going on in Tanzania. Speaking of what's been happening here, um, the results of 52 constituencies having just been announced here and, uh, and, and Edward Loasa um, starting to trail a bit now, that lead uh, almost breaking down to about a million votes. Um, and uh, the, the chairperson of the NEC, um, retired Justice Lubuva, was uh, very categorical about some of the things that are being said by the Chadema campaign. And here's what he had to say, again, reiterating what he believes is um, a misconstruing of the truth um, out of the I, out of the NEC, beg your pardon, with respect to results. And this uh, perhaps a veiled uh, response to Edward Loasa. Listen in. Sikweli unaposema kwamba tume inachelewesha ni kwamba ndio tunangojea jinsi zinavyoletwa na ni mambo yote ikienda vizuri tutategemea baadaye saa kumi tutakuja kueleza zaidi hali ikoje maana lengo letu ilikuwa tumalize isizidi kesho. Lakini baada ya hapo ni seme mawili yafuatayo wengi ambao umetuletea taarifa za awali wale watazamaji wa nje wengi kwa kweli wamesema kwamba pamoja na mapungufu yaliyomo uchaguzi umeenda vizuri na itashangaza kabisa kwamba watu wa hapa pamoja pengine na waandishi kwamba kwenda vizuri kama mtu wa nje anakuambia kwa ujumla hakuna anayebisha kwamba kumekuwa na matatizo ya hapa na pale na nchi ulimwengu wote huo hukuti mahali ambapo unapata asilimia kwa mia. Lile, lile ambalo nilisema mwanzo kwamba eti tume e, tumechakachua sio kweli kabisa. Embu jiulizeni na waandishi wa habari saidieni. Kituo ni kile kile kilichotangaza matokeo ya wabunge na mmeona hata wabunge wengine wanatoka katika vyama mbalimbali mbali. iwaje kituo kile kile uchakachuaji uhusu tu matokeo ya kuhusu rais Hiyo sije kama mnaiona kwa sababu hiyo form ndio kituo kile kile waangalizi wale wale mawakala wale wale hicho kituo e, te, tume itakuwa imekaaje ili kuchakachua matokeo ya rais tu mimi nifikiri tu mtusaidie kuelezea na nini kwa upande wetu wa tume tutaendelea kuendesha shughuli hadi mwisho ni shughuli ya kikatiba na katika hali hiyo labda tu tuishie hapo hii form mnaiona kwenye kwenye screen ndio hiyo iliyotoka kwenye kila jimbo sasa tume itakuwa imechakachua vipi kwa hivyo vipi wakati mwingine wananchi wasaidieni kuelezea tu kwamba wakati mwingine unasikia lakini uchakanue mwenyewe kwamba hivi ni kweli yani tume imechakachua wapi sisi tunapata jinsi ilivyo na ndio haya tunayotoa kwenu kwa hivyo ombi langu ni kwamba wananchi wazidi kutuamini hao wanaosema kwamba tume sio huru 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 kiasi gani wanavyofanya hivi actually ndio kuingilia uhuru wa tume hata hiyo tume ya uhuru kama ndio itakuepo sijui ni aina gani wanavyojaribu kufanya kwamba ni kama wanataka kufanya shughuli za tume na sisi tunasema aslani hatutajiruhusu shughuli zetu ziingiliwe tutaendelea na mchakato Edward Loasa now and John Magufuli's uh, results coming in now uh, John Magufuli now at 4.472 million votes to Edward Loasa's 2.996 you can see that that gap is starting to widen quite a bit oh, slightly over a million votes now um, to about 1.3 million votes between the two of them. Edward Loasa, remember, and his campaign are addressing a press conference at this moment. Ben Kitili is at that press conference. We'll give you those details as and when we get them. And also coming out of Zanzibar, the ZEC, they are announcing results throughout the day, um, final results for the presidency in that semi-autonomous region. Mohamed Ali is there. Francis Ontomwa also covering things on the ground for us here. We'll be back with more from Dar es Salaam. Back to you, Ian.